Well, good evening, beloved. It's me, Coach Karma, and your Kingdom Health Purpose and Wealth Coach, founder of SharingTheBliss.com and the Heal Toll Body and Soul Total Life Transformational Program. Woo! Yes, so I am here, and I am excited to be here. Today we are having part one of our Money Cometh workshop, and the reason being is because this Saturday coming up, I have an event all day that I'll, you know, I'll be at. Actually, it's, the event is called Level Up. It's at Snug Harbor all day for business uh, women, women entrepreneurs. So if you are on Staten Island on Saturday, you can meet me there. Just look for my table. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be. But I will be there, and I will have a table, and I think the table will be outside. So I just posted a text for you all. So I'm going to just look down every once in a while on my phone to see <clears throat> the comments. Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's see if there's any comments. All right. Okay. So, yes. Woo, so last month was very interesting because it was a five week month, meaning that we had two flex weeks. We had the fourth and the fifth weeks as flex weeks. So it appeared that we didn't have much going on, but we actually, uh, you know, were to use that time whenever we have a flex week, which is that week off, that's our time to get back on track if you have lost your footing to you know in, in any way shape or form whether it's with your diet or you know working your your work doing your due diligence with your program and your intensive for that month it's to catch up and to make sure that you fill out your form at the end so that I can be able to see where you are and what you what your ups and downs were and how I can support you during your private coaching call that following month, the upcoming month, right? So you should know that by now. Uh, but uh, I would love to see more of those forms being filled out that is not just for me it really is for you too because when you fill out those forms every month it just reminds you of where you are and what you need to do to get better tracking is vital we all need to track I did a video not too long ago about tracking and the importance of tracking for business uh, not just for business but tracking for your life tracking for success right tracking for your health to see how you're doing, to stay on the road, if you will, you know, it's so easy to get uh, to get um, detoured, right? So you want to see where you are at all times. Tracking is vital, and filling out that assessment form at the end of the month, or you know, close to the end of the month. <clears throat> allows you to track to see where you are and where you need to be. Amen? Yes, awesome. So, last month was Miracle Mastery. So, Money Cometh, I think, is a beautiful lead-in. So, we go from Miracle Mastery to Money Cometh. So how many of you want some miracles in your money? <laughs> Amen. Who doesn't want some miracle money? Amen. So all the work that we did last month with the money, with the miracle mastery is going to support us as we go through this, our money cometh intensive. So I don't know about you, but... I get excited about these intensives because I feel that what they do is they get they get me focused on 
making sure that I am on track and I am, you know, really activating and and having success in that area of my life because as you know we have that big round pie and we have the different sections of that pie and each section is a part of our lives and you know if you you can look at it as a wheel like you know I created the life wheel hey Denise hey I created that life wheel for my clients to use to see where they are in every area of their lives and most of the time that life wheel looks pretty lumpy so if it was a real wheel you know you wouldn't get very far because if you were able to move it would be slow and it would be very um you know uncomfortable because there would be a lot of bumps in the road you know with that wheel being flat in some areas so what heal whole body and soul does is that it ensures that you are pumped up in every area of your life so that there's not some areas that the enemy can come it has uh come in and started to you know steal and and cause just cause you not to have success in that area. He's very sneaky that way, very sneaky. And if you don't have support in every area of your life, that's what's going to happen. Because the word, the word says that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So when that happens, he usually does it when we are least suspecting. He does it when we are not, we have our guard down or we're not focusing on that particular area where he's coming and creeping in, right, to do his, his dirty work or to, you know, stop and block or to keep us blinded so we're not even aware that we are not moving forward in that area. Healed whole body and soul opens your eyes, opens it opens you up to every area of your life, it like sheds a spotlight on it so that you can see, oh, wow, wait a minute. I need some work here. <laughs> you know, this is this. I've been focusing on this part. I've been focusing on my my food, my health. Perhaps I've been focusing on my even perhaps working on order in in my home, but my finances is hot mess, or I'm in a lot of debt, or you know, I haven't been using my my muscles, my faith muscles to activate that part of my life finances and bringing it in and making sure that the enemy is not stealing from me because you know we live in a world today where cyber thieves are like out of control it is so crazy out there in fact I have a testimonial just the other day I had my credit card, my debit card was wasn't stolen. I, I don't know what happened, but somehow some thief got my my debit card number and was charging up on my card and actually emptied out my account. I think our Citibank was on the uh, alert and they contacted me, so they were able to stop. The card. And I just got my new card today, and they were able to. Um, they're going to put the money back in my account. I don't know when. They said up to ten days. And he says, oh, "Left out loud, hot mess. Yeah, hot mess. That's right. <laughs> Finances a hot mess. But we don't want that anymore, right? We want. We want to be aware. We want to, our finances to be blessed." We want our storehouses to be blessed, amen, and we want to be a channel for increase and flow in our financial uh, lives. So, you know, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is, first of all, just to show you, remind you of how the enemy will try to steal from anybody at any time. You know, he's just out there to do that, and he go, he works through people. The word says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the dark, wicked spirits in heavenly places. So he works through people and encourages people to, to steal and to, to do things that are, you know, um, unscrupulous and uh, wicked to get money. 
and they don't care how what what happens to the other person as long as they get what they want but God but the angels but grace amen that's the point I want to get to the point being that I did not have to hear my phone when it rang but I heard my phone it was late in the evening when Citibank called and this is a crazy thing too I had just checked my account just checked my account I mean my you could still see that my uh, it was still open on my computer I, I didn't close out that window it was still open Citibank and so I had just checked and everything was fine and get this um, you know text message heard the text message and I thought it was you know one of somebody calling about the cooking class and I'm like Citibank you know al alerting me as to wanting to know that I just used my card four times I'm like no I did not so I heard my cell phone I heard it I did not have to hear it it was late and and but God made sure that I heard that phone and I was able to pick it up because if I didn't you know I, I would have not known what was going on so they were able to do what they needed to do get all my information right then and there and shut down my card that's that's the miraculous that's the spiritual peace that's the favor that's the grace of God that's the part that that we build up and that we were working on last month when we were doing our miracle mastery you see that's what we were doing we we're praying in the spirit we were visualizing success we were doing the spiritual work to empower us and thank God because one of the things that I pray is that you know Satan you I plead the blood over everything that belongs to me by divine right. Satan, you have no place in, 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 in my finances. You take your hands off my finances. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, Denise said that she started her three day, three dollars a day. Yeah, we're going to be doing three dollars a day this month. It's going to be exciting. So we're going to talk about that. That's awesome, Denise. So, yes that's what I wanted to say that's what I how I want to show you in real life how how this works and how these different intensives how they dovetail and how they support you in your real life this is not just some exercise that you're doing this is serious work that you're doing we live in a time where we have to be on point in every area of our lives another miraculous uh, I guess a story I can tell you is that all last week when the threat of Dorian was like really strong and I was like I don't know my heart was on Florida for some reason but I was also I was praying for you know all of the different regions and and all of the you know the areas that would have been affected by Dorian and I was like you know what reminded because of what we were studying what we were um, what we, the work we were doing last month with the miracle mastery reminding myself that you know what we have authority over natural circumstances we have authority over the weather we have authority over storms why are we just sitting there watching TV and I'm saying we I don't do it but I know most people do they'll sit there and they'll watch the news and just like oh my god oh look at that oh look at them packing up oh my goodness oh what are you doing you're not doing anything in fact you're making it worse because you're putting your negative energy and your frequency in the mix of all this other negative and you're not helping the situation you're making it worse what we're supposed to do is to call those things that be not as so they are. What we're supposed to do is to speak to the storm. What we're supposed to do is take authority. 
So that's what I was doing. I was taking authority and telling Dorian to go back to where the nothingness in which it came. And then I put a Facebook post out saying that, you know, listen, this is what we have been given the authority. Let's take that authority now. <sighs> and then Anthony told me, you know, um, Dorian did not really do much harm to Florida. You know, it kind of like Florida got spared. And I was like, oh, my goodness, a confirmation, a confirmation that what you speak, you know, comes into a physical form. And what else can we speak about? You know, there's so much we need to speak about. Amen. Ah, so the, just tying up the miracle piece and how it dovetails into this part of what we're doing now. I mean, this intensive, which is money mastery. Last thing I want to say about that is how I I didn't do this, and I and I want to do it for this intensive. And that is to really speak to each and every one of you about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I don't know who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I want you to all be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I think it's very important, extremely important in this time that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We as a community should all be speaking in other tongues. We as a community should all be praying in other tongues. Um, uh, something about this. I like to watch YouTube videos, and what you can do is do a YouTube search. Do a YouTube search about praying in tongues, the power of praying in tongues, the... Um, what happens when you pray in tongues, do that because that is like, those videos are amazing. They really are amazing. You want to know what happens when you pray in tongues and that will empower you and inspire you to go on and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's what happened to me. I was doing, you know, some, well, first I read some articles, probably Kenny Copeland. Back then I was getting the Believer's Voice of Victory and Joyce Myers magazine. So we're talking about, we're talking, woo, we're talking about 2000, maybe 2000, no, more like 1990. Eight, probably 1998. Yeah, because I was still at First Central Baptist Church at the time, and I knew I, I needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Once I understood the benefits, then I just asked the Holy Spirit to um, to do it. I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. And I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in my dining in my living room by myself, asking the Holy Spirit to come into my heart. And you know, it's just that that simple. But you know, um, what I want to do is on 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 Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, next Saturday. Yes. So next Saturday. Next Saturday, we have our workshop. It's going to be part two. I have on our, you know, our calendar on the website, it says 1030. But I'm sorry, I have to change that to later on during the day. So, so you have your day free. I have to change it to 2 o'clock from 2, to, from 2, 2, 3, 4, from 2 to 4 because I have um, an an event that I have to attend. So we're talking next Saturday. I'll put, I'll send you an email to confirm that. But next Saturday, and I'll text it. Not, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday. All right. So we'll be having our workshop at at two o'clock. All right. So anyway, 
Um, the praying in tongues is one of the things I want us to do during the workshop. I want to end the workshop by, you know, having us, those of you who have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, get baptized in the Holy Spirit. So to prepare for that, I say just go on and listen to some YouTube videos. I'm going to put one up in the group uh, on the face. Who am I going to put it? Mm -mm. Probably in the Facebook group. Uh, on here, the Facebook group, I'll put it up, all right? So um, when I say here, this is going to be on the Heal Hope Body and Soul website too. But anyway, do your own research and get ready. Get ready to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's very important. One, one of the teachings that I had watched on YouTube was this pastor. He was telling, telling he, it was awesome. I'm definitely giving you that, that video too, but... He was talking about his leader and how they his 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 leader had an event and it was like a some type of prayer um, conference or something and he had declared that he had he was, they were praying in the spirit and he declared that Miami that that fought, that next month Miami Florida would not have any murders. That, that next month. And so they were praying all in the spirit, praying in the spirit, praying that prayer, that believing God for that to come to fruition, praying and praying, praying. And would you believe that that following month, Miami had no murders. It was the first time in like 40 years that that has, had happened. And that there was no no murders that were, um, you know, that the police department had heard of. So I was I was telling Anthony they probably had some shootings, but nobody got killed. <laughs> Amen. So that's how powerful praying in tongues can be. You know, it's just amazing. It's everything. All right, it's everything. And now with this money mastery, um, well, money cometh. And praying in tongues, yes, it's going to be amazing. So the first week is all about uncovering your money story. So this first week, we're talking about uncovering your money story. So we all have money stories, and each of us have um, some experience about money that, or teaching about money that we had as a child or growing up, you know, for me, basically, my parents never talked about not having money. Like, I never heard them say, oh, we can't afford that. We don't have money for that. I'm not saying that they, that they were, you know, that they always had money. Obviously, I'm sure, you know, they had money issues here and there, but they didn't talk about it with us. You know, there was always plenty of whatever we needed, and I, I never heard them talk about having lack. So I didn't, I wasn't brought up with lack. You know, when I went down south, it was abundance. My grandparents were abundantly blessing their grandkids with whatever they wanted. So I never had any issues like that with with not having. Uh, with with oh you know you got to count your pennies oh you know money doesn't grow on trees oh you know those things that a lot of us hear I never heard those things growing up so my money story may may be different as I got older you know I created my own money mess <laughs> Whew. that was a whole other story but um, yeah so what's your money story that's what we want to talk about. Right, but just to lay the foundation for money cometh. This is a healing your relationship with money, so that you can bring it forth. So when I say healing your relationship with money, I'm basically talking about like getting into vibrational frequency with money, because many of us have a mis 
communication and a disconnect with money because of the way, again, the way we were brought up uh, or just the way we were raised in church and what we heard in church. That is a big factor. That plays a big role as to how we are with money because there's a lot of conflict when it comes to having money as a believer because there are some some scriptures that will give you the impression when you first read it out of context or you read it without re understanding all the other scriptures that will make you think that you know like it is easier for the the camp for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to go to um, to see to, to to get to the kingdom. <sighs> and uh, you know some other some other scriptures like that. But in the Money Cometh book, was the guidebook. What's great about the guidebook is that it explains a lot of that stuff. It debunks it. it not that it debunks it, but it gives you an understanding of what those scriptures were saying. And all of the myriad of scriptures that say very clearly that we are, we were, um, it is our birthright to live in abundance, basically. It is our birthright to have success and to have wealth and that God wants us to be health, healthy and wealthy, right? Remember Apostle Paul, the share, one of the sharing the bliss main, sharing the bliss scriptures that we, that, that I built my business on. Beloved, I pray of, above all things that you prosper and be in health, that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, right? Amen. So the Money Cometh guidebook will help you uproot all of those, you know, um, those belief systems, those belief systems about money that make you incongruent with having it, right? Because like I said, healing your money story or healing your relationship with money, that means that you're going to have to go back and clear some stuff up. Some, some, some old belief systems have to be dealt with, and you have to get that the truth. And once you receive the truth, then your frequency will be higher to receive, you, you'll, you'll be in a more receiving mode, so you'll be open to have the frequency, so the frequency will be high and you'll be open for money channels to flow through you, for money to flow through you and to you, amen? Because many times we stop and block our own money flow because of our disbelief, those old thoughts. And sometimes, like I was saying with me, even though I wasn't raised with lack mentality, I created that lack mentality through my, as I grew up on my own, you know, just seeing how thinking, wow, you know, seems like some people are just supposed to have money and I'm not, you know, just experiences that I had in life made me feel like uh, I started coming up with my own thoughts about money. You know, and and that happens to us too. So even that has to be dealt with, so that you can find out what the real truth is. You know, we can come up with all kinds of mess. Doesn't mean that it's true. And if you want to move forward, you're going to have to deal with the mess that you created. And again, the guidebook will will see see you through. That's why it's going to be imperative that you read the guidebook. Now, let me see, put on my glasses. I'm gonna ask, see, Denise said something too. She said, Florida was spared, but it ripped through the Bahamas and took lives. Yes, it, it sure did. It did, and you know, that happens too because of not, 
of not holding on to the belief, not holding on to the, um, that which you are believing for. We let it slip. And it's not enough of us sometimes with that same mindset. That's why community is so important. That's why this community community is so important. That's why I want you all to be able to pray in tongues so that we can all come together collectively and say and point our finger and say, no, this will not happen. So like I said, my heart was on, on flow. God had put Florida on my heart, but at the same time, you know, it wasn't that I wasn't thinking about the other places. Hmm. My whole thing is that we, we need to stand in our power and stay, stay standing. Stay standing until the victory is won. Stay standing. So, you know, I could have stayed standing. I, I was saying it on a regular basis, you know, but I wasn't saying it every, you know, throughout the day, like all day long. I said it several times. But if I had a community of others who were saying it with me and speaking Bahamas and naming all the, the different um, Caribbean islands that were in harm's way, So, and we can do that with our finances. We can do that with anything. You know, we need to do that just to keep ourselves protected today. But we definitely want to do that with our finances this month because that's our point of focus this month. It does sadden me that the Bahamas, you know, they ripped through the Bahamas, the beautiful Bahamas, you know. I know you have family in the Bahamas, I think, Denise. I've, I've been to the Bahamas a, a couple of times, and, you know, it's just, ugh, it really bothers me. I am just a very proactive person. I'm like, you know what? Why do we sit here? There's another scripture where... Um, who said that? Why you sit here? Why sit we here till we die? You know, why sit we here and and watch things go to hell in handbasket? We must be more aggressive. If you are not calling those things that be not as though they are, if you're not saying your affirmations and saying your life declaration, you know, um, and reading out those three intentions that you set for yourself for this program, then you are not doing your due diligence. And I had to be, I had to have a spiritual spanking myself. And I got back on track. And I'm telling you, it is so powerful what happens when you get back on track and you make sure every morning you're reading your affirmations, you're reading your life declaration. You know, it's important. It will change things. It will rearrange things. You know, sometimes just we just get this feeling of this foreboding feeling, like a, a gloom and doom kind of spirit ho hovering over us. Sometimes, you know, and, you know, that's only natural because we live in a crazy world. Um, and sometimes you just feel like you don't know why. You just feel uneasy, but you do. And lots of times, it's subconsciously you're thinking about your finances. You're thinking about the fact, you know, well, wow, I, I don't really have all the money I need to do this particular thing, or to, I don't know where the money's coming from to pay all the bills I have this month, or to, you know, my debt is swallowing me up. I'm so overwhelmed by the stress, this, the stress of this debt. I just, you know, but you're not even saying it out loud. It's just a subconscious thing that's happening in the back of your mind. And it's messing with you. But you don't even, all, all you know is that you feel uneasy. You just don't feel right. You know, you may wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, you know, you're uneasy. Any of you know what I'm saying? You know, um, 
Can you agree? Can you um, relate to that? Well, doing your spiritual work will help to ease that because that is your subconscious mind working against your faith. It's, it's, it's also the enemy reminding you of things that he knows is going to stress you out and you are not strong enough in your faith. You're not using your faith muscles. You're not doing enough of your spiritual work to, to, to um, overshadow those thoughts. You know, your feeling of peace and security and, and joy that comes up from that world, that um, wellspring that's within your, your spirit coming up, that comes up as you continue to pray. That comes up during your, you know, as you continue to pray in the spirit and read the word and, and speak the word only and 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 prophesy and you know do your spiritual due diligence it comes up and it will shadow and it will actually it will brighten and burn out those negative fearful thoughts it will overtake those thoughts because light can overtake the darkness even in our own soul and we have the light in us because we have Christ in us. We have our hope, Christ in us, our hope of glory. We have God in us, the Father of light, of lights. He's the Father of light and lights. So when we tap into Him, we illuminate. And when we illuminate, we can burn away those things that are not of Him. So I really want you to work on page, you know, go read up to, you're, you'll be reading page two up to page five, and page five is where you'll have your your work, right? Now, I want to ask Denise, Denise, yay, I felt that way for a long time, mm-hmm, yeah. And I can't stand when I feel that way. Oh, I'm like, no. And then when I feel when I feel that way, I know that I have not been doing enough of my spiritual work. And then when I do get back into it, um, you know, like for me, like the affirmations, peace, and praying in the spirit, those two things make a huge difference. And like the praying is awesome, but when I add the praying in the spirit, and uh, reading my life dec declaration and my affirmations, that, that takes it to a whole nother level for sure. So on page five is, is what you're going to use to fill out, to uncover your money story. Okay. Now you may not have enough room as usual, you may not have enough room. You, you'll probably have to just get some extra paper to fill that out. But anyway, like I was saying, this is all about healing your relationship with money so you can bring it forth. Right? Again, if you're not in congruency with money, if you don't have the frequency, if you don't have a high enough frequency for money, then you're not going to attract it. So that's why we are working this thing out, and I'm super excited about it. So what else do I want to say? Yeah. Well, let me just let me just read a little bit of this to you. This week we're going to get in vibrational alignment with money by laying a word-based financial foundation that confirms that wealth is a good thing. Learn what prosperity really is and begin transforming your old beliefs, your old limiting beliefs about money now. Get ready to start attracting money. Attracting money, honey bunny. <laughs> attracting money, honey bunny, because 
Abundance is your birthright. Let's begin with my story. So here, you know, I tell my story, and I don't have to tell that story now, right? So that's so you get to read that again and hear my story. And then we talk about that the dictionary definition of prosperity, what it is, what the def definition of prosperity really is. So you, you, you'll be reading that, and there's some awesome scriptures in here too, which is wonderful. All right, so I want you to do that um, as soon as you can so that we can jump right into week two, which is healing your relationship with money and the angel of prosperity. I love talking about the angel of prosperity. I was listening to um, Gloria Copeland and and um, George Pearson's Pastor Pearson's, who is uh, Gloria Ken and Gloria's uh, son-in-law, Terry 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 Copeland Pearson's uh, husband. So anyway, and he was talking about the angel, the prosperity angel. And the angel that looks over your tithe and you know makes sure that that once you tithe that what you what that you are your money is protected and that type of thing. And I, I love talking about the angelic beings and how they have been created to support us. And the prosperity angel is one of my favorite angels <laughs> because we we don't we don't acknowledge that angel but we can call that we can tell that angel to go forth and bring us our money so there's a prayer that's a three part prayer and i got this prayer from um from Kenneth Hagen from Kenneth Hagen and I'm going to have I'm going to upload that video too where he tells his story of how he had this issue with bringing in money like money he had a great church it was so successful they were taking care of him and his wife and his family everything he needed and God told him to leave the church and go on the, on the road and he had so many financial issues on the road he would go to different churches and they were they could not they did not have the money like he didn't ask for money but he was believing God to supply him and when the church would take up an offering it was never enough it was never enough in fact it was so beneath what he needed that they were basically starving and he started praying to God, like, God, you know, what is going on? I really need this money. What, you know, you told me to leave this nice situation, and but you're not taking care of me financially. I need you, yada, yada, yada. My children don't have any shoes. They don't have shoes for school, yada, yada, right? And he even started to fast. And on the, I forgot what day of the fast it was that the Holy Spirit told him, you know, you're not really you're not really a faith man and he was so insulted he was like god you hit me a low blow i'm known as a faith man how could you say i'm not a faith man he said because you're not using your faith to bring in what you need you're not supposed to ask me for the money he's like i'm not supposed to ask you for the money he says no i t i told you to claim the money i told you to um to to um, to call in the money, basically, to call in the money. And the money's already here in the heavenly realm, but I can't just give you, drop money from heaven. You have to do your part. This is why I'm always saying, co-creating with God. He has his part, which is already done. He already did his part. It already is. It's up to us to do our part. Our part is to co-create with him. So the money is already in the heavenly realm. So what he said to do was he said, I'm not holding the money back from you. I'm not taking money. Um, I'm not taking food off your table. I'm not, you know, the one that's keeping your children from having what they need. It's the devil. The devil's stealing from you. 
he's holding back your money. So what I want you to do is I want you to speak to the devil and tell the devil to take his hands off of your money. And keep in mind, you have to be a tither. You have to be a tither. You have to be a tither. <laughs> okay? Because when you're a tither, that gives you, you know, that because we're children of God but there are some spiritual laws and one of the spiritual laws because we live in a cursed world that we must adhere to is the law of tithing now we're not under the law we're not we're under grace we don't have to tithe but if you want the increase if you want the devil off of your finances and out of your pocketbook and out of your you know bank account then you have to tithe If you want the windows of heaven open, you have to tithe. Right? That's what the word says. Bring all the tithes to the storehouse church so that there be meat in my house. And prove me now. If I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings so much that there won't be room enough for you to receive it all. The enemy is very legalistic. When he sees you're not tithing, he's going to creep in there and steal your money. And what he'll do is, even if you are tithing, if you don't know your authority, if you're praying to God to give you the money and you're not taking the authority, he can still steal. You can, but you can cast him down and you can rebuke him if you know you have authority. Just like we have been saved by grace. We have been healed by Jesus. You know, he shed his blood on Calvary's cross so that we would be whole and healed. We can still be sick if we don't take authority. So Kenneth Hagin was told by the Holy Spirit to tell the devil to take his hands off of, uh, take the devil to take his hands off of Kenneth, Kenneth Hagin's um finances and then he says God said next what I want you to do is say go ministering ministering spirits go and bring me my harvest no he said and then you claim what you want tell the devil to take his hands off your finances claim what you want I claim six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars this month right he claimed, back then he claimed like $100 for that week. Now, before, $150 I think it was. Before that, he was getting like $20 offerings, $15 offerings, right? So he said, God said, tell the devil to take his hands off, claim what you want, and then tell the ministering spirits to go forth. Tell the angels to go forth. The angel to go forth and bring you your money. So it says, go ministering, ministering spirits and bring me my harvest. Bring me my money. Bring me my, my $150 this week. So he did it. He said it. He went to the next town and he said and the pastor said well how much money are you how much how much how much do you need brother how much do you need in order to meet your budget he says well um i'm believing god for 150 dollars but i don't want you to worry about it you just you know just you can take up the offering but don't don't tell anybody don't don't tell them how much i need and the pastor almost fell out. It was like $150. I don't think Jesus can get that money, that much. <laughs> but you know the end of the story. What happened? He, uh, when the pastor passed that 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 money um, offering plate around, miraculously, Kenneth Hagin had $150. And he did it again and again and again and again. And it was more and more and more. You know, Kenneth Hagin has one of the biggest uh, uh, 
colleges, the, uh, what is it, like a, theolo a theologian college, a college of, um, a Christian college, Christian college in the country, right? So how did that happen? That happened once he knew to do that, he continued to do it over and over and over again. His faith got stronger, his muscles got stronger, he started believing more and more, telling the devil to take his hands off and believe in God for more and more. We can do that. So Kenny Copeland uh, adapted that teaching. Um, one of the, the men of God who I love so much, Keith Moore, Keith Moore was under the tutelage of uh, of of this man of God, and so he understood that teaching too. So I have a teaching of Kenny Ken, uh, Ken, of um, uh, of Keith Moore talking about Kenneth Hagen because he worked on he worked for Kenny, Kenneth Hagen for years, so he knew the story inside and out, and. That's one of the things I want us to start doing. I want us to do boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. You wake up, what do you need? What do you need for that week? You can say, what do you need for that week? How much do you need for that week? Make sure you, you, know, you have your tithe act together, and if you can sow above your tithe, that's a beautiful thing. So if you can, if you can sow, like say you need, you need $2,000 this week. Oh, two thousand dollars. Uh, let's see. You, you, I don't know. You, it depends. You have to build your muscle up. So, say you need five hundred dollars this week. You may start with the month and how much you need for the month. I don't know. Pray and ask God. I can't put that in your head. It's up to you. But you can say you can say it for the week. Try it for the week. Start with two hundred dollars, you know, above your paycheck, whatever it is, and make sure what you do is so. So say that you need, say that you need, um, if you need two hundred dollars, you can just sell two dollars because, you know, God talks about the hundredfold return. So you're gonna believe for the hundredfold return. So you tithe and then you sow above your tithe. And if you want, like say you want two thousand dollars, you would tithe, you would sow twenty dollars to a, a ministry or to someone. You bless someone with twenty dollars above your tithe. Right? So now you got your seed, you have your tithe time and you have your seed in the ground and you feel empowered because you know you sold your seed you tied your time you sold your seed and things you know and you're like okay i have authority now i had it before but now i'm totally empowered satan you take your hands off of my finances i command you now i plead the blood over my finances and then i claim two hundred dollars above my check this week I claim $200 above my paycheck this week. And then go ministering uh, spirits and bring me my $200 before this week ends. Then you saw it. Just thank God for it. Thank you, God. You thank God throughout the, the week. Thank you, God, for the $200, for $200 above my check. Thank you for blessing me with that $200. Oh, I have it now. I claim it now. My name is on it. Jesus died for it, and I thank God for it in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Amen? Amen. That's how it works. That's how it works, Lord. Amen. Let's see what Denise says. She says, oh, yeah. Okay, so she, that's what she said before. Cool. Who's this? Betty. Hey, Betty. Amen. So, any questions? Let me know if you have any questions. And huh, what we'll do is, oh, so let's see. This Thursday, which is tomorrow, of course, we don't have a teleclass. We have a teleclass the following Thursday. All right. And hopefully you have your schedule. You know when you have your calls. And you are to call me during the day of, and time of your call. Some people have calls this week. Tomorrow, the first Thursday, they have calls. I know Trish, her call is the first Thursday of the month. All right. So this is one thing I just want to say before I close out. Um, if if we can come together and pray for Minister Yarborough's son, he had 
he, I don't know how many strokes he's had already um, at this point, but he had another stroke not too long ago, and he, they had to put him in a nursing home, and he turned around and had two more strokes in the nursing home, and they had to bring him back to the hospital. And, you know, this man has been going through it, through it, through it. He has been bedridden for years now, and, you know, just a life that's just... Uh, you know, just on lockdown. This should not be. His mama is a amazing woman, woman of God who's doing so much for so many people. This should not be. And I'm going to ask each and every one of you to pray for Mr. Yarborough's son. Pray for him. But then I want you to thank God for his supernatural healing. Pray for his healing. Then I want you to thank God and continue as often as you can throughout the day um, this week to, to thank God for her son's supernatural healing. And just um, imagine her saying, He's, he was, he, he was, he was, getting worse and worse now he's getting better and better and stronger and stronger and the doctors are seeing don't don't see anything wrong with him right that's miraculous right and yes that's what I, I would ask those of you who would, would want to stand in prayer with with me uh, on that I would really appreciate it okay all right everyone no questions look good okay so meet me at Snug Harbor. Those of you cooking class, the cooked vegan is sold out, sold out. So if you didn't get back to me on the, on the cooked vegan, I'm sold out. I may be doing another one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing one for Thanksgiving, before Thanksgiving, a cooked vegan Thanksgiving cooking class. The, the, the raw vegan, I still have a few more spaces and the desserts and snacks. Um, but the raw vegan is getting full too. So those of you like Betty, who is, you know, she's going to be doing the classes virtually. You don't have to worry about it. And you can still do it virtually. You can, but you have to register and let me know that you want to do the classes virtually. And um, all of the silver, the silver heiresses, they are $25 per class. And if you're doing it virtually, you can get all three classes for $50, okay? So the, right. so the gold heiresses, they, know they don't have to pay for the class because their package includes things like that, okay? All right. All right, so I love you all. And, of course, the, 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 the diamond, the diamonds. Henry, he's a diamond. He doesn't have to pay either. Love you all. Have a beautiful evening, and I will see you at the cooking class if that's if you're going to be uh, part of that. Saturday, I'm going to be at Snug Harbor for Level Up. You can meet me there, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.